Hey guys, it's Robert with RV Weekends, and I'm going to show you how I make beef jerky. Stick around. Now, there are many ways people make beef jerky. I am not a professional. I just learned a recipe from someone who uh, offered it to me. I like the beef jerky. And then I changed that recipe to fit what I like. Uh, this is just how I do it. And the first thing you gotta do is you gotta marinate the meat. And you gotta buy a certain kind of meat. Now, leaner meat is gonna be easier to chew. Uh, ground beef is gonna be easier to chew. Uh, I typically use uh, top round, it's the kind of the price point that works good. Bottom round is even cheaper, but it can be tougher uh, because it's got more uh, chewable junk in it, whatever it is. Uh, so I typically get London Broil top round slabs, and let me show you what I'm talking about. This is typically what I buy. The price is right. This was on sale. They had a sale, usually $7.99 a pound. I got it for $4.99 a pound. This is top round and they put London broil on it. And I usually get something that's two to three pounds. This is a 2.46 pounds. Uh, so I usually, depending on how much you wanna make, better meat would be more expensive, like venison, deer meat, moose meat, things like that that have less fat in the meat. So I've had venison, I love it. I've used moose, I love it. So men venison and moose are my preferred meat, but I don't have any. So this is at the local grocery. So this is what I'm gonna use. I've had this in the freezer uh, for a while and actually it's perfect to cut now in my opinion. Uh, I'm gonna put this aside because I'm gonna make the marinade first. Now you can do this in any particular order as far as you can cut up your meat and let it sit, make a marinade and then put it in the marinade or make the marinade first and then cut the meat and put it in as you do it. Now I usually use like a basin, some kind of a container like a uh, typical container with a lid, eight by 14 or something. That's what I like to use, but I'm in an RV. I don't have that sitting around. So I use a one gallon Ziploc. Now this is what I use for my marinade. This is what the recipe somebody gave me, Dale's steak seasoning. They did have other things like soy sauce. Uh, they added cayenne pepper. They added liquid smoke things like that to create more flavor. I didn't prefer the liquid smoke flavor and the soy sauce or it just got too salty. So I use this, this is reduced salt, uh, Dale steak seasoning. All right, here's where you could always use a helping hand since I don't have the, the basin thing that I was talking about, a container that's like this, that I could just pour it in. I'm using the bag because I'm in an RV. I had this left over from my last batch. This is about a half a bottle. So uh, I'm gonna pour that in. And then what I'll do is I'll put some water in here to get um, another like a quarter of this bottle of water. I'll put the lid on it, shake it up, you know, to get it, the heavy stuff off of the sides get all the flavoring out. So like I said, I got about a third of a bottle, a quarter of a bottle in there. And again, it's not an exact science. It doesn't make a huge difference in my opinion. And I'll pour that in. So I'm done with that. So now I got a brand new bottle that I'm gonna pour in. And again, this, this is thick because it's reduced sodium. The Dale steak seasoning without the reduced sodium, with all the salt in it, is a lot more liquidy. Um, but man, is it salty, and I don't prefer that. So I like to dilute it, because I don't want that strong taste of the base. I like to have a, a lighter taste of the base. So now I'm gonna put this about halfway. There we go. And now I'm gonna add some lemon, lemon, uh, kind of smooths over the, f the harshness of the flavor. I like the lemon, so I am not gonna measure this. I'm just gonna go with what feels good. 
And now my marinade is ready. So let's cut up some meat. Meat is ready to go into the marinade. Uh, one thing you have to watch for is meat sticking together. So I'm not putting it all in in one chunk because if the meat sticks together, the marinade doesn't get in between the pieces. So I'm kind of mixing it as I drop it in so the marinade gets on all the pieces and no two pieces get stuck together and the marinade doesn't get there. I'm done. I'm gonna put it in this nice safe tray to where if we have any leakage, it will be contained. All right, that's one. So now we gotta cut up the rest of the meat to marinate it. Now I'll let that meat marinate. I just do at least eight hours, so I do it overnight. And then in the morning, it'll be ready to go. Uh, if you got more time, do more time. So we'll check back after we're done marinating all the meat and I'll show you how I season it and dehydrate it. Hey guys. Welcome back. It's been a day and a half. Uh, it's Sunday morning. Let's see what time it is. It's about noon, I think. Actually, it's two o'clock. So the marinade has been going on for uh, almost two days. So now we're gonna get the meat out of the marinade and get it into my dehydrator. Here is my small bag of marinated beef. So we're gonna just dump it in here. So, and I leave, try to leave a little bit of space. I will sprinkle the Caribbean jerk. This is called Island Jerk. All right, I got all the beef jerky on the trays and spiced up and dehydrating and I had the temperature set at about 140 degrees when I read the manual on for uh, making beef jerky from this uh, little dehydrator it said to put it really hot at the very beginning for about an hour or so and then slow the heating down as uh, it gets drier so you don't over dry it I will come back and turn this down in about two hours and check the moisture uh, of the meat on every tray to see how it's doing and rotate the trays. Uh, so I'll do that in a couple hours, so we'll check back. One thing you may want to keep in mind is the dehydrator generates a lot of heat. And if you're in a small place like me in a camper, it can make your camper warm. So if you can do it outside, that would probably be better if you're worried about getting too much heat in your RV uh, but I got all my windows open got a fan running uh, so it's not too bad and it is winter here in Florida at this time we're at the two hour mark so we want to check the jerky and see how it's doing so let's take a look all right let's look at the top of the shelf here looking still wet but some areas are definitely looking like they're getting dry. If you look right here, that looks dry, drier than here. So I'm learning something too. Certain areas dry a lot faster. So it looks like the back side of the hydrator, the dehydrator is putting out more heat there. That's where it generates the heat. So you can see this area is drier than this area. So rotate the tray 180 degrees do that 
Yeah, you can see it there. See how dry, darker it is here and lighter it is there. So that's why you monitor what's going on. All right, it's an hour and a half later. Oh yeah, it needs a lot of work there. So we're gonna keep that going. And the middle trays are looking really good. Oh yeah, I had a schedule. I think I want to rotate the trays then because the ones on the bottom are looking like they need a little help. So let me take the bottom trays and move it up here and take one of the middle trays and move it to the bottom. Looking good. This is looking really consistent, really consistent. So what I do is I'll take the meat and bend it and see if it turns white or is really rigid, then it's dry. But this is still flexible, so it's still moist, needs more time. Now I'm gonna dial the temperature down. So we're at 140, I'm gonna cut it back to about 115, like that. Cause now we don't need a ton of heat, we just want to airflow to let it uh, dehydrate not not too hot so I turned it down 115 and we'll check back in another hour and a half all right guys it's been a few more hours let's take a look at the jerky all right now I do the bend test look standing up by itself nice and if you bend it and you see white, it's definitely dry enough. See that? See that white? That means it's dehydrated. So it's looking really good. It's ready to turn it off. What I'll do is I'll turn it off, let it cool. I'll take them out and check every piece to make sure every piece is dry. If anything has any bit of slight moisture to it at all, I'll put it back in the dehydrator. Before I bag my beef jerky, I cut it into small, easy, bite-sized pieces so I don't have to tear it with my teeth. And I'll bag it up and I'll put it in the freezer to preserve it because there's no preservatives in this meat. Because um, most people will put some kind of brine on it, some kind of preservative. That way it won't grow any mold. Um, this is all fresh. So if you leave this out and there's any bit of moisture, it's gonna grow mold. So I keep it in the freezer. I store it in the freezer and if I'm gonna have some, I'll take it out. It'll, it'll thaw in no time because there's no water in it. So it thaws out really quick. So uh, that's what I do. I bag it up, I put it in the freezer. So that's it. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, give me a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. And if you want to see more content just like this, as well as my camping trips around the state of Florida, home movies, and some nature views, subscribe to the channel and share this video with a friend. Hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when I upload my newest video and share this video with a friend. That would really help my channel grow. Thank you for watching RV Weekends, and I hope to see you next time. So uh, I'll use Ziploc baggies. So let me make the marinade now. And I even delete, d dilute this. When I read the manual on beef jerking, beef jerking, it's a couple hours ago. Uh, uh, camping trips around the state of Florida. Uh, uh,